The third annual Housing Action Coalition Forum held at Black Desert Resort brought about new ideas and ways to fund and create affordable housing. Our tagline is financing affordable housing. So we're always looking for partnerships with banks to leverage the money that they want to put out in the community. With inflation and interest rates still fairly high compared to wages in southern Utah, many workers crucial to public health, education and safety are still struggling to find affordable housing. The uh, housing market is slightly better than up north in Utah County where I came from, um, but still not affordable to get an actual house. So we're renting right now. It's finding a low income home that's also maybe handicap accessible or long term for a family. The only way that we've been able to afford to purchase a home was to find a home that we could also rent out um, to help us pay for our mortgage. We both have really good jobs, we're both college educated, um, and the market in St. George just was really tough to, to get into. Right now we're paying $18.50 for rent alone, and our max for rent would be $2,000 is what we would do it. So for us to be able to get into a home, we would have to be purchasing a home that's at $300,000. And there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing for that right now. Recent volatility in the housing market sets the stage of prices and uncertainty. Economists say it won't ever go back to the way it was. And everyone keeps saying, okay, when will the prices go back to the way they were before? They never will. Prices will never go back to the way they were five years ago. And so we all just need to adjust. We are still 2,000 homes, 2,000 listings behind where we were uh, at the end of 2023. In order to end where we did last year, we would need over 2,000 new listings coming on the market in the next two months. While obtaining housing is becoming more difficult in Washington County, several contractors and others invested in their communities are working together on ways to fill the void. We will be adding about 60 new attainable homes for home ownership in the next two years. We want the people who work there to be a part of the community, and we think that they bring more to us than we could possibly bring to them by providing some housing. So we're really happy to be working with Charlene and her group and making some of that happen. While the area continues to grow, contractors are working to meet the needs of those who need a place to live. This includes building smaller starter homes. Okay, so we could sell these 275 homes for way more than what we're actually going to sell them for because we agreed with the county to keep it at a certain price price point. Yes. Why are we doing this? <laughs> and you're like, because we're going to build 275 more homes than what we would have built. Business owners, city council members, and shareholders were among those searching for answers in bringing more attainable housing to the area. Due to the lack of affordable housing, we've had to rapidly accelerate our wages to support our employees' abilities to be here. And it's pushed us out of the competitive landscape for our commercial portion of our business, which is half our products, uh, which has now forced me to start looking outside of St. George for where we're going to expand and, and enable us to hang on to that business rather than lose it. We've hired 500 people over the last um, three months. We're going to hire another 2,000 uh, before we're done. If there's no affordable housing, the, the reality is that's poaching which we don't want to do. We are community partners with everyone here. And uh, that was the very first message that I said on the hack board. We had stakeholders there and I said, we all have to figure this out. The, to make this work and particularly to avoid a lot of the elements of what we say is crime and other things that come from density, they ha it has to be in the middle, involved in all of the community, not just out on the edges. Over the years, the housing in Washington County has shifted from single-family dwellings to apartment buildings and multi-level housing in order to accommodate lower wages. While the area continues to grow, contractors are working to meet the needs of those who need a place to live. Primarily, it's really builders trying to respond to the, to the challenge. The other part of it is that, that truly that is where a lot of the market is. 
Ideas of using Sitla lands, which are set aside to fund schools, are also coming to fruition. The first one is in Washington County, but it's right adjacent and in the annexation plan of Ivins. So it's over in Ivins, it's a 40 acre parcel. It's right off Highway 91 and 400 South about right there. The path of development is to it and this parcel is, is ready to go for development. So the second largest parcel that we have is in Leverican. It's called Le, the Leverican Twist Parcel. If you ever go to, uh, go to Leverican and you turn on uh, Highway 91 that takes you over to uh, Zions, you go up the hill and you go up around, they call it Leverican Twist because it's Highway 9, that goes around our parcel. So it's right up there on the Mesa, amazing views, beautiful parcel, a little bit disconnected from the city because it's up a little bit higher, but it is in Leverican and we're releasing that. So that's 315 acres. The third one is, um, I'm gonna go to the third one, it's Warner Valley. So if you're driving on SR7 that goes around the St. George Airport, to the east, there's a big valley there. Um, we own the majority of that valley, 3,000 acres sitting in there and we've released that. Uh, this one is a maybe if it'll be available. And that is because it's called the um, Tonaquint parcel. And where it is, is it's just east, or excuse me, west of Bloomington in the Tonaquint area. Um, we have 3,000 acres there. We're releasing 1,500 acres of it for affordable housing. This one is a very developable piece because the utilities are there at this parcel um, and it's connected to town. Now, this parcel, I just leave this one to the last because we're actually not going to release it uh, if it's contingent. Basically, right now it's in the Habitat Reserve, the Red Desert, ha Red Desert Habitat Reserve, and, but it's conditional upon the Northern Corridor. So this was put in when the Northern Corridor was um, as part of the, the trade for the Northern Corridor that goes, goes through. If that Northern Corridor comes out, then this piece comes back out and comes available for affordable housing. Even the state of Utah is pushing hard on housing initiatives with strings attached. I can set a goal in my affordable housing plan or modern income housing plan, 120 units. I don't build any of them. If the developer can't get the tax credits, can't get the financing, market costs are too high, can't get the labor, they don't get built. And then to, if we don't have a modern income housing plan and that we see progress in incorporating that housing, those BNC road funds go away. So now we're back to gravel road. How much is that? And, Oh, it's millions of dollars statewide. Would you say 100 for this, million? For the city, oh, I don't know how many million it is statewide. For the city, Santa Clara, it's probably a quarter million dollars a year that would come into our coffers that would go away. There's been a lot of finger pointing that's gone on for the last number of years. Um, the development community has pointed to cities, the states pointed to cities and said, you've got to solve this. Um, and the reality is that if you want to blame somebody or something, it's the free market economy. The, the price of housing is what it is because of the market. These are our residents. These are our neighbors. These are people in our wards. These are our next door neighbors. So we've got to respect where they're coming from, why they're coming in that direction, and what we can do as leaders and we are all in this room leaders, you don't need a title to be a leader, to address that. Isn't that nice? Jordan that Wall beautiful? was given the Hack Hearthstone Award for pushing his ideas forward in constructing homes with ADUs built in, so buyers will have automatic rental income upon completion. I think we're on the right track. I think uh, everyone being here kind of shows that, you know, this is definitely a priority for us, and so, um, I appreciate you guys and I think there's going to be a lot of good things that, that come with the group of people that are just sitting here and the people that have left. So, The Housing Action Coalition plans to continue educating, collaborating so and advocating for new ways and resources. They encourage others to become involved as well. From Black Desert Resort, Melissa Anderson Community, Education News.